Good morning, everybody. Um, today is Monday, uh, July 12th, and I am so glad to be here in front of you um, reading God's Word and uh, just seeing how it fits into our everyday life. Um, I want to pray. Uh, as I uh, left church yesterday, we were all outside, which was nice. They have a little gathering, and um, I got to see a lot of the kids up close. Um, uh, they're all gathering with Pastor Danielle now at church, and uh, just in a little, um, little you know, bit of time over a year, how how much they've grown and. Uh, how, you know, some of the people even have changed, but uh, everybody, one thing was in common, that they all looked happy to see each other and happy to be in community with each other as part of our um, family, our, our church family. And I pray that, uh, Lord, that, um, that you continue to bless each one of us, that you continue to be that voice, that uh, that voice in our ear that uh, we need so much, uh, that we need that guidance and that you're always there and that we can always find you very easily. I pray these things in your precious name. Amen. Okay, today's um, gospel comes to us from Exodus. Uh, we're really uh, closing in on the end of this. Uh, Exodus 38, verses 1 to 20. Um, it's a little bit long, but I will start reading it. <clears throat> They built the altar of burnt offering of acacia wood, three cubits high, it was square, five cubits long, and five cubits wide. They made a horn at each of the four corners, so that the horns and the altar were of one piece, and they overlaid the altar with bronze. They made all its utensils of bronze, its pots, shovels, sprinkling bowls, meat forks, and fire pans. They made a grating for the altar, a bronze network to be under its ledge, halfway up the altar. They cast bronze rings to hold the poles for the four corners of the bronze grating. They made the poles of acacia wood and overlaid them with bronze. They inserted the poles into the ring so that they would be on the sides of the altar for carrying it. They made it hollow out of boards. They made the bronze basin and its bronze stand from the mirrors of the women who served at the entrance to the tent of meeting. Next, they made the courtyard. The south side was 100 cubits long and had curtains of finely twisted linen. With 20 posts and 20 bronze bases and with silver hooks and bands on the posts. The north side was also 100 cubits long and had 20 posts and 20 bronze bases with silver hooks and bands on the posts. The west end was 50 cubits wide and had curtains with 10 posts and 10 bases with silver hooks and bands on the post. The east end toward the sunrise was also 50 cubits wide. Curtains 15 cubits long were on one side of the entrance with three posts and three bases. And curtains 15 cubits long were on the other side of the entrance to the courtyard with three posts and three bases. All the curtains around the courtyard were of finely twisted linen. The bases for the posts were bronze. The hooks and bands on the post were silver, and their tops were overlaid with silver, so all the posts of the courtyard had silver bands. The curtain for the entrance to the courtyard was made of blue, purple, and scarlet yarn and finely twisted linen, the work of an embroiderer. It was 20 cubits long and, like the curtains of the courtyard, five cubits high, with four posts and four bronze bases. Their hooks and bands were silver, and their tops were overlaid with silver. All the tent pegs of the tabernacle and of the surrounding courtyard were bronze. Well, that's, uh, that's quite an undertaking. God, uh, obviously... Uh, Aside from being a, a great builder and a great designer, he built and designed and created everything we see, <clears throat> including ourselves, uh, and he made everything perfect. Uh, and he obviously wants um, this courtyard, um, this the altar, the the um, 
all of its amendments, everything. He wants everything to be perfect, as, as perfect as the men there can make it. Um, uh, what it says to me is that uh, we are so imperfect um, that, um, you know, since we fell from God, since, uh, since we've sinned and fallen from grace, we um, just could never uh, come to God uh, the way that we could have came before. Uh, God had all these conditions he had all these uh, ways to um, speak with him. Uh, speaking at this time, they were speaking through their their priests, um, uh, and the way that they would come to God was uh, very specific and very drawn out and um, and very you know organized. Um, when Jesus and and curtains all over the place. When Jesus came, what he did was tore that curtain um, so that we could enter uh, God's kingdom because of Jesus, so that we can communicate with God much easier because of Jesus. And uh, he left, when he left, um, when he ascended into heaven, he left his spirit down, his Holy Spirit that would be with us always, and that's that voice that we always have. Uh, and that voice is never wrong. That voice is also perfect, uh, which is one with God. Um, so, you know, this is just a really a reminder. All that, all those instructions, all that minutia is just a reminder showing us how really little we are and how insignificant we are, but uh, because of Jesus Christ, um, uh, we are made uh, righteous through him, and we are able to come to God through him. Lord, um, please let whatever we come to learn through your word, whatever way that your word touches us, uh, let that stick with us. Let that uh, affect our heart and... Uh, let our senses be always in tune with the way that we should be. Uh, let us follow your word and let us follow uh, your instructions and be as obedient as the people were uh, when they were building your tabernacle and your ark, the ark of the covenant that held the, uh, <clears throat> the Ten Commandments. Let us strive to be that perfect in the, in the creation of a uh, son and daughter of God in the way we, we, that we try to create ourselves as pleasing to you. And even though we can't be perfect, let it be uh, the best that we can be. Uh, we pray these things, Lord, in your precious name. Amen. Ciao.